Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Countries special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Drain. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by interesting the Ukraine to the rest of the world. There is so much in common in our mutual history between Poland and Ukraine, even to the point that a renowned Polish activist and writer, uh, Jerzy Gedroitz, once said, there is no independent Poland without independent Ukraine. Our guest today is Ivana Cerkovniak, Executive Secretary of the NGO Polish Union of Ukraine. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's, no, it's so nice to be here. Um, now, you are an executive secretary of the NGO Polish Union of Ukraine. So probably you are the, well, you are the expert yeah. <laughs> of the status of uh, uh, Poles in uh, Ukraine. What is the status? Uh, you know, Polish NGO in Ukraine, as you have said, was founded in 1990s. And okay. since that time, it has been promoting close relations with Poland and Ukraine. The aim of our organization is to preserve uh, the national traditions and identity of Poles in Ukraine, to take care of people of Polish origin, to uh, work uh, with our um, uh, governmental uh, institutions to establish Polish uh, schools mm. in Ukraine. Yeah, but that's, I, you know, uh, we met in this uh, festival of Chopin, another Polish man, and uh, I was very surprised uh, when you talked to me about uh, the large co Polish community in Ukraine. Can you explain that uh, uh, you have some historical uh, roots for that? Uh, of course, nowadays we've got more than 100 organizations in different regions of Ukraine. Mm. And uh, these organizations support the main idea, ideas, develop and enrich them according to the peculiarities of each region. If we talk about Western and Central Ukraine, Poles were settled there in 16th century. But if we talk about Eastern and uh, Southern Ukraine, Poles came came there in the 50s. Uh, Polish people came there from Kazakhstan and Siberia. Now they are the main members of our community. And um, that's why also uh, I know that the, the, the Poland uh, is supporting a lot the uh, Ukraine and this new independence of Ukraine. And uh, you, the, the Polish, you were uh, very active on Maidan. And you, uh, what, what, what uh, can you can you talk also about that? Because we we talked about that, uh, and I am very interesting to have your point of view in, on the TV. Uh, of course, uh, you know uh, our cultural life, uh, the cultural life of Polish community is um, uh, very, uh, you know, various and active. But when Maidan started, we stopped all our festivals and all our concerts mm -hmm. uh, because it was a tragic time. Uh, for us and uh, Polish community also supported Maidan. Uh, there were, uh, you know, a kind of um, a camp um, uh, there on Maidan of Polish people. Uh, we also uh, cooked uh, Polish um, uh, dishes such as bigos, uh, traditional ones, and uh, also our activists, uh, uh, the vice president of our uh, community, Victoria Radic, also took an active part in uh, this. Uh, you know, um, uh, on, on Maidan. And you, Sergei, you have some, uh, some Polish roots? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, it, it's do, like you, this. Do, do you have some, some maybe in your family? Some... Uh, I can't trace that yet. Uh, definitely the last name speaks uh, mm -hmm. louder than mm -hmm. anything else. But it's difficult to trace because a lot of uh, archive information has been lost. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, now, the question is, Ivana, why are you involved with this? 
Why am I involved? Because I've got uh, Polish origin. Okay. Uh, my grandmother, Rosalia Binkowska, uh, was uh, Polish. Okay. Uh, my grandfather, uh, Jan um, Horodetsky, also was uh, Polish. Uh, so I graduated also from... Um, Polish Department uh, of National Kiev University okay. uh, because of my Polish origin. And you're teaching Polish? Yes, I, I've been teaching Polish for four years uh, and uh, I've got students uh, okay. on uh, Kiev Economical uh, University in Kiev. Uh, I've got uh, small children who, uh, who also um, uh, have uh, Polish origin, okay. uh, so um, you know it's my everyday life. Uh, my so, I've always had this question about uh, people from uh, one nationality living in another country. The question is this: uh, How, why do the people live in another country? Mm -hmm. Why don't they try to come home? if they consider another country or another a nation as their home. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one, how does a person living in a different country mm -hmm. identify themselves? Because, uh, like for instance, living in Ukraine and uh, being proud to be uh, Polish. Polish. So does, how comfortable is this and how, uh, and why does it have to be this way? Uh, mm -hmm. Firstly, you think, um, um, you know, I'd like to say that uh, we are the citizens of Ukraine. Okay. We've got Ukrainian passports, but we identify our nationality as Polish one. A lot of Polish living in Ukraine are Catholics. They go to Catholic cathedrals. Uh, so um, these are the difference between Orthodox Ukrainians and Catholic mm -hmm. Poles. Well, but Ukrainians are not only Orthodox, so I... Now, may, may be, it may be a little bit... Um... But Catholic and Polish traditions help us to identify themselves and to, uh, ourselves yeah. and to say we are Polish, you know, talking mm. about Christmas, but for religion... example, uh, talking about Easter, we've got different traditions. Ukrainians and Poles uh, have a lot in common, but we also have, uh, you know, different, some different uh, traditions and cuisine and so on. No, that's true. But the religious traditions are not necessarily those that identify the nationality. Like I wouldn't, uh, you know, diverse Ukrainians from Pol Pol uh, Polish because of uh, Catholics or Orthodox, because there are a lot of Ukrainians and a lot of Polacks that are not uh, religious at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, yeah, the, the next, uh, <laughs> you know, um, characteristic is language. Okay. Polish uh, language, uh, which is now from, uh, known from generation to generation yes. uh, in uh, those families. You know, sometimes I've got children who does not know Polish, but they are from uh, these very Polish uh, families, but they remember, for example, uh, some words uh, in Polish, and they come and say, you know, I remember that word that my uh, grandmother used to say. Yeah, uh, bardzo. Uh, that's all I mean. And so on. <laughs> Uh, right. So, uh, language becomes a key, uh, you know, point of identifying the person. Sure. But sure. I think nowadays, you know, uh, you, we can feel European more than Polish, French, Ukrainian, even Russian. I think we have to feel uh, European. We, are, we have a lot of link. Uh, for example, between uh, Poland and France, we have in common one king. Mm -hmm. uh, we have in common Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, we have in common a lot of, we have Pien, um, Prince Poniatowski. Mm -hmm. We have in common a lot of part of our history with, with, with Poland, uh, with Ukraine also and the Kiev. Then, no, that's why, that's, that's the, the European civilization. That's why, you know, uh, you can be uh, Polish and proud of your Polish roots and be Ukrainian, be Polish and proud of your Polish roots and be a uh, French. It's not, we, we are in the same community, the European community. We, we, we share mm -hmm. the same history, we share the same kings, the same priests, the same, the same, the same history for me. It's very simple to now to, to, to be in this way, more than, more than before, more than before. Well, 
The reason I'm asking, uh, because I am <clears throat> genuinely, gen, gen, genuinely trying to understand this issue because um, having a, a, rep, a large group of, uh, a representation of a large group of uh, different nationalities, and in Ukraine, we have what over 100 and yeah, over 100, yeah. 40 or yeah. 20 mm -hmm. different nationalities. Um, it definitely, on on one side, it it it, it creates um, you know a variety uh, in cultures and uh, broadens the world view. But at the same time, it creates uh, an issue of the national security in some in some case like for instance this was the situation with uh, the annexation of crimea mm -hmm. supposedly a lot of russians mm -hmm. that lived there mm -hmm. wanted to okay. break away but it was not the case but okay. that's the card that was played in that game yeah but you you, are, you 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 have two way to 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 build a country and to build europe the first way is to unify the people the second way is to divide the people and Putin is divided the people. Yes, true. And uh, the European Union is uh, uniting diversity. And uh, this is the key point of uh, the European construction, united in diversity. And for me, this is very important because now we see that the Putin system wants to divide the people. And uh, for me, we have to unify in diversity the people. And this is the example of Ukraine. You say more than 100, 120 Something uh, like that, ethnic yeah. groups. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know that uh, Polish people respect uh, Ukrainian culture, respect Ukrainian mm -hmm. language, uh, respect Ukraine itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but at the same time, they want to show uh, that they remember their traditions. Definitely. They remember their culture. So uh, this uh, identity is very is very important for Poles here in Ukraine. And now you, we talk about Poland, uh, and I say that Poland is supporting a lot Ukraine. And uh, in your uh, community, in your NGO, uh, what is the feeling of your friends about Ukraine? What is the f your feelings about this uh, Putin aggressions? Or those put in uh -huh. uh, I can't uh, talk about politics, but I can say about uh, you know people relationships mm -hmm. uh, because um, you know during uh, Maidan we also took uh, some um, you know soldiers activists uh, to Poland. We helped them to make visas to go to Poland uh, to have uh, some uh, hospital recovery. Uh, so uh, we took uh, you know an active uh, part. Uh, helping Ukrainians, not Polish ones, mm. but um, you know, writing uh, letters uh, to Polish consulars and ambassador, uh, <laughs> because I'm doing this this kind of job. Uh, he reacted, uh, you know, in a moment. So mm. uh, uh, I remember a woman who came uh, crying uh, to me, and she told me, uh, you know, uh, my son is in Poland. I don't know where he is, but I have to go. I have mm. to leave. Help me. So I helped her, you know, and. Uh, this very day she got mm -hmm. visa and uh, came to Poland and that that that's an effect of this help of of, of uh, Poland for Ukraine and now you are on the same way because um, on Atozona you are helping a lot those soldiers you are giving uh, some support yes we help them uh, also we do some volunteer work but we you know have some uh, different uh, departments uh, mm -hmm. you know all over ukraine and i uh, can't say um, uh, you know that um, you know kiev uh, could help uh, could could give more help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish it could give more help. Mm -hmm. But talking about, you know, Vinnytsia, Zhytomyr, Odessa regions, mm -hmm. I can say that uh, they help a lot um, to our soldiers. Yeah. And now you, you are a teacher of Polish. Yeah? Yes. Then yes. please talk about that because you know, uh, what, what what are you? You know. Do you want Ivana to teach you? Both. <laughs> I, I, try, I, I try to understand Ukrainian and <laughs> this is not very difficult. Uh, but yes, you, 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 the average of your students, 
Uh -huh. You know, when I graduated from the uh, university, mm -hmm. I uh, finished my master classes and I was thinking, what am I supposed to do? But um, a job found, uh, found me, <laughs> you know, I did, not, I did not look for a job, but a um, job found me because uh, a lot of Ukrainians uh, started to um, study Polish language. Uh, Polish uh, language becomes more and more uh, popular among uh, Ukrainian students mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, uh, Polish and becomes this very bridge uh, from Ukraine to Europe, mm -hmm. you know, and students studying mm -hmm. uh, in Polish universities uh, also, uh, you know, um, choose uh, their way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, most of them uh, go back to Ukraine and, um, mm -hmm. yes, they, uh, you know, continue to build Europe here in Ukraine. But some of them, of course, choose to stay in Poland or uh, go uh, further, go to Western Europe. What, <sighs> what is uh, the uh, typical Pole's DNA? What makes... Uh, a, 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 a poll uh, different from the rest of the world. What can you, what can you uh, say? Because, uh, yes, we are friends with them. In fact, uh, you know, our, since our program in the recording, we can't uh, uh, know the result. But tonight at, at Euro 2016, Ukraine is playing Poland, <laughs> and, and though Ukraine has no chance, uh, Poland, uh, uh, you know, I would say we just need to let. Poland win just because we're <laughs> brothers but at the same time uh, there's always this competition between us mm -hmm. which is you know it's better to have competitions in sports mm -hmm. rather than in anything else you know but uh, so uh, by the time the program uh, is uh, broadcasted we will have already known the results but um, what would you say mm -hmm. the DNA of a, of a uh, poll? You know, teaching Polish, I also uh, say to my uh, students that uh, there are uh, three characteristics, main characteristics of uh, Polish. Uh, may I say in P Polish some words? Uh, Bóg, honor, ojczyzna. Uh, these are the main uh, three points of uh, Polish. Let, it's like God, oh, dignity, God, dignity and motherland. Yeah, vichizna, Oichizna, just like in Ukrainian, uh, similar. And, uh, honor, honor, it's dignity. Mm -hmm. Honor, like honor, yeah. honor. similar in, yeah. in the language. S similar, and, and, but, but and the bo translation, bo bog, it's like God. Bog, bog, bog. or yes. God. Ah, all right. I'm <laughs> learning <laughs> yes. Polish. Yes. All right. So, and this, this is God, the, uh, uh, honor, uh, dignity, dignity, and, and uh, motherland. 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 No, that's that that is that is interesting. That's strong. That's strong values. Yeah. Very strong values. These are three strong values of, of each Polish. You know, it. We have had again so so long history together because uh, we are a neighboring country, uh, and um, there have been quite a few contradictions in a lot of. Um, uh, on the, on, in the way of understanding of certain uh, parts of a period uh, of uh, history, uh, how do you do you do you face that? How do you deal with that? With the contradictions, uh, how easy it is to be the peacemaker in a lot of those. Uh, it's, it's very hard to be a peacemaker, but um, you know, uh, Ukrainian and uh, Polish history is very tragic and very complicated, and we try to find our, uh, you know, similar points mm -hmm. in history. Uh, talking about, uh, for example, uh, t a communist terror of 2040s, mm -hmm. uh, we should uh, remember about, uh, you know, Bukovina Memorial Complex, uh, where Polish were killed during those. Uh, Bolshevik times. Uh, you know, we also should uh, remember about a uh, tomb of um, uh, Polish soldiers who uh, fought uh, for Kiev here and uh, they uh, tried. In the 20s. In, mm -hmm. in 20s, yeah. yeah, in 20s. So, and uh, they tried uh, to liberate uh, Kiev and they liberated Kiev in 20s. 
Uh, so uh, our history, as I have said, um, is a complicated, tragic, but uh, we try to do our best, uh, you know, to um, honor these people, to memorize the victims of those tragedies and uh, to be together at uh, such uh, tragic times. Now, I think you have more point to be unified than to be divided. Yes. And, you know, this is, for, 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 for Frenchmen, you know, this is the example of the, now the friendship with uh, Germany, you know. Mm -hmm. We did civil wars between France and Germany. And I know the tragic story and the tragic stories you have between Ukraine and Poland. But now, you know, uh, all the things who can unify you is more large than the thing who can divide you. And uh, those things are the European values, democracy, human right and you also dignity and um, that's why I am very optimistic about the future of the European continent uh, with uh, such um, people because uh, that, that's the future of, of the European Union. Well uh, to me the, the future of the European community uh, is uh, viewed uh, in a better light when you see when you have organizations like this like yours, yeah. uh, that concentrate their efforts on the things that unite and, uh, uh, and on the peacemaking. So, and one of the best ways is to launching a lot of different cultural projects. So that's what I want to know. What are your projects, in, you know, in, in the cultural aspect that you do? Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, so tell us about it. As NGO organization, we get a big support from Polish parliament and uh, Polish funds, such as Wolność um, Demokracja uh, and Wspólnota um, Polska in Warsaw. And we're also invited to some, uh, you know, official uh, events uh, there in uh, Warsaw, and they know about our projects. Um, we. Um, the, the main projects are uh, cultural festivals in different uh, cities mm -hmm. in Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, and also educational ones. Uh, we make, uh, you know, scene contents, uh, we make um, uh, folklore festivals, uh, we uh, organize um, uh, some summer camps in um, uh, Poland. Uh, one of them is now on Tatry Mountains. Uh, mm -hmm. So children went there and uh, they not only have uh, some rest, but they uh, also learn Polish language. Well, how, how many festivals you, you have uh, in your average? Uh, ev uh, annually, we organize for about uh, 10 festivals uh, a year in different cities of Ukraine. Nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that looks very, that you are staying very busy and active, which is, which is good. Uh, time is <laughs> flying, <Yeah>. as always. <laughs> okay. And so, basically, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, it's good as long as we yeah, stay on the unification process. And yes, that's what I say. Everything we you, you We have to be uni unified in diversity. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and uh, I just want to say that I'm happy that Ukraine is becoming uh, uh, the country of where over 120 different ethnic groups, including uh, such a broad group uh, of uh, Poles living in Ukraine, uh, find the comfortable to, to be You know, here, Ukraine, to live here. Uh, Ukraine is like, you know, uh, the, uh, a concentration of uh, all the European nationalities. Well, mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> yeah, really. Let's, uh, some yeah. Germans, some French, some Jewish, Maybe some Ukrainian, Ukrainian, some Russian, mission. some uh, cool. some from Tatar. Uh, Tat that's tolerance. That's yeah. could be one of the traits of Ukrainians that we mm -hmm need to have and, uh, and tolerance show. and freedom because yes. uh, you are fighting for freedom now. All right. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you yes, very much. Thank uh, you very much. And be successful in everything you do. That's thank what you. we wish you. Are you are welcome. <laughs> it was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Ivan Natserkovniak, Executive Secretary of NGO Polish Union of Ukraine. Olivier Durin and Sergei Vilchansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we'll show to you the real Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.